let's discuss the communication procedures that are going to occur on our cross-country flight from Greenville, South Carolina down to Columbia, South Carolina. So we're going to depart from Greenville and fly direct down to Columbia is our game plan. At Greenville, first we have to listen to the ATIS and then we'd of course write down maybe it's ATIS information PAPA and then the other information that goes with that. Then we are going to contact ground, so we'd say Greenville Ground Skyhawk 8700 PAPA, information PAPA, request flight following to Columbia, Charlie Alpha Echo at 5500. So then what they're going to do is they're going to organize with this, let me back up for a second, this is a Class D airport and this is a Class C airport that kind of oversees our area if you look at the sectional chart. So when I tell Greenville, Tow uh, Greenville Ground that we want flight following to Columbia, they actually call and organize our flight with GSP, with Greer. So then they'll give us some information back. They'll tell us what heading to fly on our departure, what altitude to fly, and what the departure frequency will be, as well as what squat code we need to put in our transponder. So we write all that information down, and then we tell ground that we're ready to taxi. So if we're, say for example, up here in the northwestern part of our airport, then they may be give us instructions to taxi to runway 19. So we taxi out, and now we've done our engine run up, and we're at the hold short line. The next radio communication we would make would be to contact the flight service station to activate or open our VFR flight plan. And we had discussed earlier different ways to do that. We could do it via our cell phone, or we could contact the flight service station on one of the frequency box using our comm radio in the aircraft. So now we'll have our flight plan activated and the timer set now for one hour. And then we'll be ready to call the tower. So when we contact Greenville Tower, we always tell them who we are, where we are, and what we want. So who are we? We would say Greenville Tower, Skyhawk 870 Sierra Papa, holding short runway 19, ready for departure. And then most likely they'll give us our climb out instructions and clear us for takeoff. Now if they told us to hold short for arriving traffic, then we have to be sure that we repeat back to them, uh, hold short runway 19 Skyhawk 870 Sierra Papa. You must repeat back the whole thing if they tell you to hold short. Okay, so but let's say for example they told us uh, fly the runway heading and we're cleared for takeoff. So we can take off and we have to fly the runway heading. Now some point on our takeoff, usually around say 500 feet, they will tell us to contact departure. Well they will have already given us the departure frequency to use which in this area happens to be 118.8. So we will hopefully have put that in our standby radio so we can easily flip-flop the frequency. Now, as we're climbing out, they want us to contact Greer at the GSP airport. So we have to tell them um, our full call sign because this is our initial call up, as well as the altitude and the heading we're traveling. So we would call Greer, we would say Greer departure, we call them departure because we're departing the area. So we'd say Greer departure, Skyhawk 870 Sierra Papa, 2000 climbing 3000 runway heading. And that way they know that we are going to continue this way until they tell us something other. So then they usually come back and they may say some, something like uh, 870 Sierra Papa, radar contact, a climb to your VFR requested altitude. So they're giving us permission to continue to climb up to 5,500. Now, in that scenario I just gave you, they did not tell us to proceed on course yet. So we're basically still stuck on the runway heading until they tell us otherwise. Now let's say that you've traveled several miles and you're still on runway heading and you're wondering, hmm, why haven't they given me you know, uh, a direct to my destination? If you're ever unsure, just simply ask them. You could say Greer Approach is Skyhawk 07, uh, 870 Sierra Papa cleared on course, and then they'll say, oh yes, cleared on course. Sometimes they purposely hold you on a particular heading because maybe they have other traffic that could be a conflict, or sometimes they honestly just forgot about you, or maybe they thought, because it's a similar direction, maybe they thought that you were already on course 
um, because sometimes the communications between the facilities might be a little blurry. So the point is, is that if you're ever in doubt, just simply ask and you know get get the answer. All right. So now maybe they said, okay, yes, you're cleared on course. So now you're allowed to go direct to Columbia. So we're flying down toward Columbia. Now, if you look at the communication section in the chart supplement book for our area and for Greer's area, you'll notice that there's two departure frequencies. One departure frequency controls this area on 18.8, and the other departure frequency controls this area on 119.4. So typically, we start off on the frequency of 118.8, and then part way, as you um, part way on your departure, they'll say contact Greer departure on 119.4. And you're thinking, well, I was just on Greer departure. Why are they switching me to Greer departure? Well, it's because you're you're flying into someone else's section or sector, so they're the ones that need to oversee you now. Okay, so don't be surprised if you switch from Greer departure to Greer departure, or if you're flying in a really big area like Atlanta or Charlotte, for example, you may switch um, Atlanta approach six different times as you pass through the area. But anyways, as we're proceeding on toward Columbia, probably when you're maybe 50 miles away or so, you want to start listening to the ATIS. You want to listen to Columbia's ATIS as soon as you can so you're prepared uh, for your arrival there. So you listen to the ATIS and then it's going to give you maybe ATIS information, Bravo, and you write down the information that goes with it. And then somewhere along the way, Greer is going to tell you to contact Columbia Approach. So this was departure because you're departing the area. Now we contact Approach because we're arriving at that area. So Columbia Approach is going to, they're waiting for you because Greer gives them a handoff. In the radar room, um, they're sitting in the dark room and they just see little blips flying on the screen. They can tag you and make you kind of flash as you're flying down toward Columbia. And then the Columbia radar guy will kind of pick you up and that way they know they're controlling you now instead of Greer. But anyways, um, <clears throat> we don't have to learn to be controllers, but it's nice to know how the system works so it makes a little more sense to you. But anyways, um, so Greer is going to hand us off to Columbia, and we always check in with our altitude. So we would say something like Columbia Approach, Skyhawk 8700 Papa, information Bravo, 5,500 feet. And then they usually say something like radar contact, and then they usually give you an updated altimeter setting um, that you can adjust your Colesman window to be sure that your equipment matches what's going on in, in the local environment there. All right, the next thing is as you're getting closer into Columbia, and maybe this particular day they're landing runway 23 because on our flight plan and our weather and everything um, that we had worked out earlier, the winds were out of the south, so most likely they would be using runway 23. So Columbia, um, uh, Columbia Approach may start turning you to a heading, like they may say, uh, turn left heading 090, expect the visual for runway 23 and they may vector you around and then clear you to land. Oh, excuse me, they're not going to clear you to land. They just vector you around and then Columbia Approach is going to hand you off to Columbia Tower. Tower controls the takeoff and landings. So once, they, once the approach tells you to contact Tower, then you would say something similar to Columbia Tower, Skyhawk 870 Sierra Papa, be visual for runway 23 or has runway 23 in sight or you know whatever information that uh, you want to give kind of pertaining to your location or what you're about to do. All right so then the tower may tell you uh, the runways in sight you're cleared to land. So then you can come in and you land you exit off the runway to the first taxiway you get to um, but, of course, you wouldn't slam on the brakes in order to make the first taxiway. It's the first taxiway you get to comfortably that you can safely exit the runway. Now, could you ever exit on, onto a runway in order to go where you're going? Well, you should never exit onto a runway, which is white painted center lines. So don't exit onto the white paint, which represents the runway, unless ATC tells you. If they say, you know, next right onto runway, 1-1 one, one in this situation, then you can taxi onto the runway. But basically, once you land, you're expected to get off at the first exit 
in the direction you need to go to your FBO fixed base operation or wherever you're going to go. You know, certainly don't exit off to the uh, left if you need to go over here because then you create a lot of problems with ATC trying to crisscross you back across the runway. Okay. So anyways, um, the tower would clear you to land and then once you've landed and you exit off the, uh, the runway, then um, you would contact ground and often you'll hear them say contact ground on point niner or they may say contact ground on point eight. Um, they don't give you the whole frequency sometimes because it's so clearly understood that it's one two one one two one. So sometimes you might hear them shorthand it and they'll say contact ground on point niner and you're like what kind of frequency is that? Well it's pretty much like I said understood it's 121.8 or 121.9 is very common. Okay um, so when you're clear of the runway and then you contact ground and you tell ground where you are. So maybe you are uh, cleared at Alpha and you'd like to taxi to Eagle Aviation, for example. So you just tell them your position and then where you want to taxi to. So it'd be something like this. Columbia Ground, Skyhawk 8700 Papa, Alpha requests taxi to Eagle Aviation. And then they will give you your taxi instructions that you should definitely write down. Be sure you know where you're taxiing to. And then you taxi into your parking spot now, either just, as, just before you shut the engine down or right after you shut the engine down, one way or the other, you need to be sure to call back to the flight service station and close your VFR flight plan. Let them know you're safely on the ground at Columbia and you'd like to close your VFR flight plan. Now, one other thing I want to bring up in um, our ATC communications that's extremely important is the hold short line. So the hold short line is two solid lines and two dashed lines. And hopefully by this point, on lesson 13 or 14 of your flight training, you will know what a hold short line is. But just to be sure, uh, we're going to bring it up again here because it's extremely important when we're dealing with ATC air traffic control. Um, so the hold short line, like I said, is two solid lines by two dash lines. So I'm going to find that right here um, at the approach end of runway 19. I would have to be sure I hold short. We always hold short on the solid side. Don't ever stop on the dash side. You always stop on the solid side. So when I taxi out here to, uh, to get ready to take off at runway 19, I should be holding short before I contact the tower. When I'm coming down here and landing in Columbia and I want to exit off the runway, so let's say I exit off right here, I am still on their runway until I dash through the dash and stop on the solid side. So for example, this would be what the taxiway looks like. So don't ever stop on the dash side. You always cross and you cross over to the solid side before you stop and then you'd contact ground. So what is it called if we cross over the hold short line without permission at an, a control tower airport? It's called a runway incursion. So runway incursions are a really big problem and unfortunately it's a very big problem even with airliners because runways can be very confusing and um, the, you know you're, there's a lot going on, you're really busy. So be sure that you have a current airport diagram, be sure you review that airport diagram, be sure you understand what the airport markings mean so you don't get in any trouble. All right, so that's how the ATC communications would work from one tower to airport down to another towered airport. Just a quick review, we'd have to listen to the ATIS, then we'd contact ground, and then the flight service station, open our flight plan before we depart. Then we would ask tower for departure. Tower is going to switch us um, over to departure as we take off. We may get switched to the other departure on the other side. And then as we're approaching Columbia, we want to listen to their ATIS, and then we're going to eventually be handed over to Columbia's approach. Approach is going to hand you over to tower, and then once we clear the runway, we'll contact ground, and then when we complete our flight, we'll contact the flight service station um, to close our VFR flight plan. Okay. Let's say that we landed, we went in, um, maybe used the facilities, got a little drink of water, and then we want to fly back. So how are the communications going to work in reverse? So to depart out of Columbia area, then the first thing we have to do is listen to the ATIS again. Then we actually contact clearance delivery. 
Oops. Okay, so clearance delivery is used to kind of lighten the workload on the ground control. Now up here in Greenville, we didn't have a clearance delivery because the airport's just not that busy. So ground control serves as a clearance delivery frequency as well as ground control, which is controlling the movement on the ground. But in Columbia, they're a bit busier, so they have a clearance delivery frequency, which we would tell them that we have maybe ATIS information, Delta, and um, we want to obtain flight following to fly back to Greenville at 6,500. And then they will give us our information like what runway heading to fly or what heading we fly after departure, as well as um, the altitude we can climb to and the departure frequency and a new squat code. Okay, so once we have the information from the clearance delivery frequency, now we're ready to taxi, so then we would call ground and ask for our taxi instructions. We taxi out, we end up at the hold short line, we've done our engine run up, and now we want to call the flight service station to open or activate our VFR flight plan. Then we're ready to call tower and tell them we're ready to take off. Then once they clear us to take off, they're going to hand us off to Columbia departure. Okay, it's the same people that we talked to when we arrived, but because we're departing the area, we call it departure. Then we'll work our way back to Greenville, and as we're approaching Greenville, then we're going to listen to the uh, ATIS at Greenville downtown first. So we'd listen to the ATIS, so we know what's going on at the field, and then we would be talking to Greer Approach, and then Greer Approach is going to switch us over to Greenville Tower, and then we would land, tack, um, and after we land and clear the hold short line, then we would talk to Greenville Ground, and then finally we taxi to our tie-down spot, and we would um, call again to the flight service station to close our VFR flight plan.